Okay, we are here continuing in uh, our additive manufacturing course. Today we will talk about designing for additive manufacturing. Uh, as we saw previously, additive manufacturing technologies are different and having all kinds of various methods of doing the 3D printing. So we will take each uh, 3D printing technique um, on the side and try to talk about the good sides and the bad sides of that specific methodology and uh, eventually trying to talk about the uh, small tweaks that we can follow in order to uh, make our design and our final project and final product as perfect as possible. Uh, so the main general rules for designing for having a good design for additive manufacturing firstly you want to decide What is the printing method you are going to use in order to make your design as a real product? We discussed before that in 3d printing uh, we have uh, some additive processes same as uh, FDM and uh, the multi jet modeling and we have the lamination 3d printing we have as well the solidifying processes, same as the selective laser sintering, the selective laser melting, and the stereolithography. The second step is to decide what kind of material that you have in mind. The project that you have, and the, the design or the product that you want to achieve, uh, all kind of materials that you are planning to use, either one material, or a group of materials they need to be in mind uh, while you are designing for a 3D printed product. Uh, thirdly, you want to consider that while doing the design in that specific printing methodology that you chose, that you need to maybe most in most cases, as we saw, that most cases you need some support for the structure that you are trying to to print so you want to keep that in mind as we mentioned previously there's some uh, 3d uh, CAD softwares that that are ha that are supporting the 3d printing uh, some of them they generate um, automatically the the 3d support for your part based on the orientation and the and the the nature of your part uh, sometimes you need to go either you need to des to design these supporting materials yourself or you want to go to a third party software that can do it for you. Uh, in some cases, the supporting material is, is different than the main part material. So you want to keep all these details in mind while doing your design. Let's start with designing for FDM 3D printing. Uh, the fused deposition modeling we mentioned uh, and we talked about it briefly before. It's basically used for quick and low cost prototyping uh, where you can use it for wide variety of applications and, and it is suitable as well for solutions of functional parts such as enclosures. Just as a hint, uh, enclosures in specific, they will be discussed in details how to design enclosures and all the goods and bad sides of uh, using 3D printing for designing enclosures because of, of the importance of this application um, in, in this field. Uh, the limitations for the FDM printing method. Uh, uh, basically, you want to understand these limitations uh, before you start doing your design. It's very important to do that. That's what we will discuss about uh, moving forward. So one of the uh, limitations for the FDM is uh, the bridging. So the bridging occurs when your printer needs to print between two supports or anchor points. Like you're having a kind of bridge design, as we will see. You have two supports and you have material in between. Um, in this case, you will have the bridging problem. Uh, when, when you have no support offered for, for the initial layer being printed, uh, this layer is going to link between two main anchor points. Uh, so this kind of layer doesn't have anything below it to support. So it will be pulled down by gravity and causing the material to bend uh, 
just it will it will bend in in a kind of curved shape um, mostly the bridges occur in the horizontal axis uh, when they are when they are formed perpendicular to the to the gravity force um, it can be found in the walls of objects or in the top layer of hollow parts so we can see here an example so you have two anchor points and the bridge going in between them as you can see the flow in here this is ha this hanging wire is basically this was the first layer that's been uh, printed above these two supporting materials or these two supporting areas so since the uh, layers was in his green state which means still not fully solidified then it will be slowly pulled down by gravity second layer third layer fourth layer are doing these flows as well until eventually these layers are supporting the coming layers uh, then the layers start to go uh, almost in place we can see here uh, another example like this part is designed this way kind of five consecutive bridges and we can see all kinds of flows uh, regarding bridging are happening in here so if, if we need to if we need to do some kind of uh, sketching for the problem let's move to sketching software in here so basically you have the the part we we just saw so we have a kind of bread with a certain thickness so um, let's assume this as a supporting point for the design and this is another supporting point so your printer already printed these two parts when it reached here this layer the first layer been printed by the nozzle as you remember the FDM have a nozzle that's printing the material the first layer will be kind of concave shape that's because it's pulled down by the force of gravity which depends on the mass um, and the gravity constant uh, what we care about in here let's redraw the same uh, drawing in here uh, let's split it in here so we have the supporting area this is a well supported area in here then you have the length of the bridge in here the shorter the length the better because as we said in the center of mass you're having a force of gravity that's dependent on the mass and of course the longer your bridge the more mass it has which will make uh, more likely it will have the bridging problem in here let's go back to our slides so that's what we discussed so gravity is pulling down so the shorter your bridge the less likely the problem that will that will occur so keep that in mind uh, so as we mentioned to reduce the impact of bridging you need to reduce the distance of the bridge but sometimes you know you have your own design that really can't work out only by that kind of design and that kind of bridge length uh, another solution to avoid the problem is by uh, doing a supporting structure for the hanging bridge that you have in your design support is always uh, a solution for these kinds of defects but you know sometimes you need your uh, you need your design to be ready faster or you don't want to spend a lot of time doing the kind of uh, supporting structure for your design so having a shorter bridge could be a solution for that problem of course if you decide to go with the supporting material still you have some defects by removing the support you will have some marks on your part uh, but as well still you can have some kind of post processing that can you make your 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 design or your final product looks look better these are two examples for fdm printed parts 
and you can see here the designer decided to go with the support then you can see here there's some defects in the support itself uh, but we don't care about it we care that our final product is as we need it to be so we just remove the supporting structure in our post processing methods uh, then we have our final product ready uh, as we mentioned the FDM support removal can leave some marks um, severe post printing processing could be needed if you need your part to be uh, as perfect as possible so going from left to right we can see this part it's a kind of medium complexity part it have some kind of supporting materials in here you can imagine it can be it could be uh, the post processing involved cutting that supporting material by knife or sharp sharp tools and then to remove these kind of um, rough surfaces you just use um, surface uh, surface uh, processing papers or uh, maybe kind of surface finishing machines just to make the surface as smooth as possible and as perfect as the designer needed to be the next defect that we may face while designing or while producing parts through the FDM the vertical axis hole dimensions error so when you design a hole in the vertical axis of the of the print in respect to the print if the hole is a vertical um, most of the times these holes are undersized uh, when you want to print a hole while making the hole diameter uh, there is always a reduction in diameter because the nozzle print the diameter of the vertical axis hole uh, while it's doing that it will be pressing the new layers as it's putting down the layers like up down layers are being built while the hole is part of that design then the nozzle will be and the the layer will be compressing the the previous layer and so on so the layer will not be a perfect uh, circle it will start to be kind of oval shaped uh, which can reduce the um, the hole diameter for that hole uh, so the compressing force that is coming from the nozzle will deform the extruded round layer shapes uh, from a circle into a wider and oval shape uh, this will increase the area of contact with the previously printed layer this will for is done for the purpose of improving the adhesion between layers so that they will not peel off but in the same time it will increase the width of the ext extruded segment so eventually it will it will decrease the diameter of the hole that's being printed uh, we can see here on the right so this is the force applied by the nozzle to compress the layers to improve adhesion so this is pre-compression and these layers are after compression you can see instead of having it as a circle uh, the diameter will be wider it will be an oval shape uh, it's not circle anymore that will affect uh, when you have another set of layers on this side so your diameter will be shorter so this is not like the hole this is like the wall of your hole so it will be uh, not as designed it will be smaller uh, it could this this uh, this could be an issue especially if you are printing small diameter holes um, where the, the if this effect will be greater um, due to the ratio of the hole diameter to the nozzle diameter so the smaller the hole the more obvious this problem is uh, of course the the how big and how obvious is this defect depending on the printer type that you're using and the slicing software you're using or the slicing software embedded in your design software and the size of the hole the material being used uh, to reduce the diameter of vertical axis uh, uh, always uh, you need to in, in order to solve this problem you need to account for the slicing program uh, the accuracy is different depending on um, um, kind of printing material used as we said uh, based on the desired accuracy you want 
uh, if you need a high level of accuracy, then in that case, you need to re-drill the hole after finishing uh, the printing of your, of your product. So you just go ahead to your hole, bring the just normal mechanical tools from the market, and just drill your hole or confirm the re-drill your hole and confirm the diameter of that hole to meet your needs. Uh, the next defect for the FDM printing is the overhanging. It's one of the common print problems for, for related to quality for FDM. Uh, they are usually occur if you print a layer of material uh, that is partially supported by the layer below it. Uh, it's almost similar to bridging, uh, but inadequate support provided by the surface below the build layer uh, will result in a bad layer adhesion, um, bulging, or curling for, for these layers. So we can see here, this is an example of, uh, of the overhanging problem. So you're not having a full bridge. Uh, you are having a uh, half bridge, so all kinds of overhanging problems are shown in here. These are layers that are not well supported, and they resulted to be hanging in the air in a random way until the material is strong enough to support coming uh, surfaces. Of course, this kind of defect is unacceptable, and maybe post-processing will, uh, will not give you the result you need because the dimensions of your design are different already. Uh, if you need to print to do the um, overhang without losing the quality, you just need to print uh, up to 45 degree inclination between each layer and the next one. Like you need to have a gradual inclination for your part going on 90 degrees. You need to reduce the 90 degrees angle uh, to be 45 degrees at maximum. The less, the better, and the less problems that you'll face, uh, depending on the material as well. Uh, when you are printed the new layers, uh, they are usually at 45 degrees supported 50%. They are supported by 50% of the previous layer, which allows sufficient support and adhesion to build, to build upon it. If you have above 45 degrees design and you don't have any other solutions, then you need to include some support so that you are sure the newly printed layer does not bulge down and away from the nozzle. We can see here two illustrations, a design with 45, 45 degree um, layer um, incrementation. And you can here see this design like L design with 90 degrees uh, overhanging. So the gravity will, will let the layer that you're applying here to, to hang in the air in a fuzzy random way in here and reduce the overall um, it will reduce the overall dimensions of your original design. So if you have it 45 degrees, you don't need support. If, you, if you're insisting to do this kind of L shape with FDM printing, then for sure you need a support to be applied in this area so that these layers can be held in, in place until they get solidified. Um, uh, it's a known practice in the market and between hobbyists and engineers, uh, this design is uh, pretty famous and open access on the internet. You can grab this design. If you want to know how much your printer can handle, either you using whatever printing technique you want, depending on your printer type and depending on the material you have, maybe you're not sure if your material can handle 45 degrees, 50, 60, etc. You just use this part and print it through your printer and see wherever it fails and it start to show defects. That means this is the um, mechanical limitation for your printer. The other defect that we may face while printing through FDM is the curling. Um, this happens as well when printing overhangs and uh, the newly printed layer become increasingly thinner at the edge of the overhang this will result in different cooling um, uh, properties, which cause it to deform upwards. It will pull upwards. Uh, that, that is the kind of effect as we will see coming next. Uh, the problem uh, is of the limitations and overhangs that can be eliminated uh, by the use of support for the wall 
angles about 45 degrees same as the previous problem uh, for larger overhangs where the support is needed you need to be aware that the marks will be present on the final surface uh, unless you can do a special post processing to that part uh, another problem that we're facing as a flow in the FDM printed designs is the cornering uh, when the printing nozzle uh, of FDM is known as circular um, corners and edges they will have a kind of radius they will not have a sharp edge they will be a radius because the layer you're printing is is having a kind of curvature and radius uh, this radius is equal to the size of the nozzle which means these features will never be perfectly squared as we can see here the surface is pulling up and the corners uh, are kind of squared and not sharp so for sharp edges and corners always the first uh, layer of the print uh, is important and similar to vertical hole vertical holes uh, uh, as the nozzle print each layer it will compress the print of material down to improve adhesion uh, for the initial print layer it will create a kind of flare called elephant foot as we can see here so this is the first layer you will have a kind of elephant foot in here uh, it can impact the ability to assemble the FDM parts as this flare will 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 be pro produced protrude protruded outside the specified dimension um, another issue uh, for FDM is that first print layer uh, have kind of warping um, most likely ABS is famous about warping because it have a high printing temperature compared to the PLA so the, the, the base layer is the first layer to be printed and cooled uh, while the other hot layers are printed on the top which will cause different cooling and result in the base layer to curl upwards and away from the build plate while, while uh, shrinking uh, we can see here the, the warping uh, up and down of the part uh, that's printed using the FDM uh, adding a, cham a chamfer or radius along the edges of the part uh, where they contact the build plate or the base plate this will reduce the impact of, of these kind of coronary problems and uh, it will assist the removal of the component uh, from the build plate when the print is completed so you can see here all the elephant foots, the warping, are uh, all kinds of defects are showing in these parts. Now if you want to create a, a vertical pin, uh, if you want to print it with FDM, either part of assembly or, or a, a separate part, um, um, even if, you, if the alignment is required, uh, these features are often functional, so it's important to understand the size of your vertical pin that the FDM can print accurately. Uh, when you have large pins above, 50, above 5 millimeters in diameter, uh, you need to print them with a perimeter and infill, uh, which may, will make a strong connection to the rest of the print. If you have a smaller diameter, less than 5 millimeters, uh, you can make, uh, make it up of only the perimeter prints with, without using infill. Uh, it will create discontinu discontinuity between the rest of the print and the pin which will make a weak connection that is susceptible to, to, to breaking and it's able to, to break eventually uh, even if, if, if you're not lucky enough the small pins uh, maybe they will not be printed as all uh, they will not be printed at all um, because there will not be enough material for the newly printed layers to adhere to uh, so in order to make sure that your vertical pins are going to be printed firstly you need to have the, the, the right printer calibration you need to have the optimal layer height you need to tune the print speed the nozzle temperature and all these details uh, this will reduce the likelihood of small pins failing uh, adding a radius at the base of the pin will eliminate uh, that point where the stress concentration um, and, and and it will add strength. If you have this small pins that are less than five millimeters, um, if you can bring an off-the-shelf pin and insert it in that hole 
this will be the best solution in that case so always holes with FDM you just do them kind of yourself include them in your design but then bring a tool from the market off the shelf and ensure the drilling of that hole manually